<laughs> now listen to Father Knows Best, transcribed, starring Robert Young as Father. <laughs> Welcome to Springfield, and another half-hour visit with the folks in the White Frame House on Maple Street. Sit back and enjoy life with the Andersons, Kathy, Bud, Betty, Margaret, and Jim, as the head of this typical American household once again sets out to prove that father knows best. All the world's a stage, claimed the Bard of Avon, and all the men and women merely players. However, at this moment in the white frame house on Maple Street, there is one person who feels that she is probably the worst player who ever stepped on any stage. This attitude on the part of Betty Anderson is a direct result of her performance in a college play last night, a performance which she feels hit an all-time theatrical low. Her absence from the breakfast table is the chief subject of conversation among the other members of the Anderson family. Like this. Well, if Betty doesn't get down to breakfast pretty soon, she'll be late for school. I can't get her to come down. She says she's never going to school ever again. Says she can't face anybody. Oh, for goodness sake. Her performance wasn't that bad. I didn't think it was bad at all. In fact, I thought she was rather good. What was she doing when she kept fumbling around with that back curtain? She was trying to find her way off the stage and couldn't. <laughs> Looked like she was hunting for moths. <laughs> or beating a rug. Well, I think it was mean of the audience to laugh. I hope this acting thing doesn't leave a mark on Betty. Oh, she'll get over it. This might take a little longer than usual. Might take until this afternoon. <laughs> I don't know. She seems to be taking it pretty hard. Well, that's natural. A little thing like getting tangled up in a curtain can seem like a real tragedy to a girl of her age. <laughs> I remember once when I was in a high school play... Is that the time you fell off the stage and then hid in the barn for two days? Oh, did I tell you that before? Oh, yeah, lots of times. Tell it again, Daddy. Well, there's not much point now. Might as well take Betty's plate off the table, Mom. What'd she say? She said she's never going to eat ever again. <laughs> oh, dear. But utterly never. Jim, she can't just stay up there. She's got to go to school. You better go up and have a talk with her. In her present state of mind, it wouldn't do any good. Just give her time. She'll get over it very quickly. You said you hid in the barn for two whole days. Did you tell that again, Dad? <laughs> No, I didn't. You started to. All right, let's uh, drop it. Well, I certainly wish there was some way to bring her out of this. I hate to see her moping around the house. Well, she's certainly not going to listen to anything we say. Maybe if some outsider... Wait a minute. Maybe there's an idea. Where? You've met uh, Ed Gifford, haven't you, Margaret? Gifford? Yeah, he dabbles around in real estate a little. But he was in show business for a long time. He used to be sort of a matinee idol, I think. Edmund King Gifford. Well, what about him? I'll call him and have him call Betty and tell her he thought her performance was wonderful. That might uh, help bring her out of it. Do you think so? Well, it's worth a try. A little professional-sounding praise can do wonders for an actor or actress. Well, if it'll do some good... I'll call Ed right now. Catch him at home. I don't know whether this is the thing to do or not. Well, it won't hurt to try. It's for a worthy cause. Are there any more hotcakes, Mom? I'll fix you some more. Hello, Ed. Uh, this is Jim Anderson. Oh, <laughs> pretty good. Say, Ed, I uh, wonder if you'd do me a little favor. Well, last night, Betty was in a play over at the college, and... Oh, you saw it. <laughs> yes, that was her. <laughs> And because of that, she's practically contemplating suicide. So 
I thought if you'd call her up and compliment her on her performance, it, it might cheer her up a little. That's right. Well, fine, Ed. <laughs> I appreciate this, old man. Yeah, goodbye. He'll do it. Now, if we can only get her to come down and answer the phone. Oh, she'll talk. The telephone is one thing that girl can't resist. Maybe we could all sort of help along by saying nice things about a performance. Yes. And, Bud, those smart cracks you were making on the way home last night weren't doing much good. I didn't say anything. Hardly. Oh, no, not much. I just told her she might win an Academy Award. Yes, but you didn't need to say she was going to run Lassie, a close race for her. <laughs> I didn't say anything bad last night, did I, Mommy? No, Angel. Just be real nice to her. I think that call from Ed will do the trick. Hey, listen, I think I hear Betty coming downstairs. All right, now, remember, children, be complimentary. And whatever you do, don't let her know that I called Ed Gifford. Do you understand, Kathy? Yes, Daddy. I never give anything away. Oh, no. <laughs> shh, shh. Here she comes. Hello. Oh, good Hi, morning, Betty. Good morning, Princess. Sit right down. I've got some more hotcakes on the griddle. I'm not hungry. Gee, Betty, you were wonderful last night. Oh, that was the best, most greatest acting I've ever seen. Oh, it was good. All right, don't rub it in, shrimp. <laughs> it won't work, Mommy. <laughs> Kathy, uh, just keep quiet. I thought you were real keen, sis. Oh, go chase yourself. Why does everybody have to make fun of me? Nobody's making fun of you, dear. We all really think you did just fine. I'll bet. I just made a big fool out of myself is all. Oh, now, Betty, nobody noticed that little mistake at all. In fact, several people sitting near us commented on how talented they thought you were. I'll bet. Did they really? Oh, yes. I thought you were real keen, sis. Oh, who asked for your opinion, smarty? <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Betty, it's for you. Uh, <laughs> it might be. I don't want to talk to anybody. Well, I'll answer it. Betty, couldn't you eat just a little something? Here's orange juice. I'm not hungry. Hello? Betty? Well, just a minute. I don't want to talk to Ralph. It's not Ralph. It's a man. Oh, who is he? Whoever he is, he has a nice complimentary voice. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes, that's right. Oh, really? Oh, but I was awful. Do you really mean that? It's working. Well, no, I haven't had any real professional experience. I guess it just comes naturally. <laughs> Oh, sure. <laughs> well, no, I've never thought of going there. They say it's awfully hard to break in at first. He doesn't need to lay it on so heavy. <laughs> oh, really? Why, I'd love to. Well, thank you very, very much. Goodbye. Do you feel better now, Betty? Oh, Father, I can hardly believe it. Do you know who that was? Well, let's see now, uh... Winston Churchill? <laughs> it was a talent scout. Talent scout? From New York. You know what he said, Mother? He said he saw the show last night and he thinks I have worlds of talent, but utterly worlds. Well, that's what I kept trying to tell you. You were as good as any of the other girls. As good as? He said I was utterly outstanding. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. He said I need experience, of course, but I definitely have it. Have what? <laughs> you wouldn't understand How uh, soon are you leaving for Broadway? <laughs> well, not right away But he wants to talk to me about it Gee, I better go up and get dressed Yes, you'd better or you'll be late for school Oh, I won't have time for school now Mother, where's that little black choker of mine? The one that... I know, the one that makes you look like Ava Gardner <laughs> Oh, no he said I reminded him of June Allison. What can I wear that'll make me look, you know, real wholesome? How about a nice flower sack? <laughs> oh, I know. I'll wear that cute new gingham dress. 
Aren't you going to eat any breakfast? Who needs food? Oh, sis. Yes? I thought you were real keen. Oh, thank you, darling. Huh? <laughs> boy, oh, boy, that sure worked on her, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that, Ed, if he isn't a typical ham actor, you give him one small role to play, and what does he do? Fills it up into a big production. Broadway talent scout yet. Did you tell him to say that? No, that part was his own idea. But at least it did the trick. It cheered her up. I wonder if I ought to call him and find out exactly what he said to her. Mother! Might be a good idea. Mother! Yes, Betty? If Janie Liggett calls, tell her I'll have to cancel our plans because I may be going to New York. Uh, oh, sure, I'll tell her. Oh, but if Ralph calls, better let me talk to him. I've got to break this news to him gently. <laughs> yes, all right. <laughs> She's certainly riding high now. Oh, I hope I can remember what to say to whom now. <laughs> Hello? Betty? Oh, who is this, Ralph? Oh, oh, well, just a minute. I think Mr. Anderson wants to talk to you. It's Ed Gifford. This is a good chance to talk to him before he talks to Betty again. Oh, good. Hello, Ed. Say, I want to congratulate you on a fine performance, but uh, I'm afraid you overdid it just a little. I mean about the talent scout business and all. What? Are you sure? What's the matter? Ed says he didn't call Betty. He's just now getting around to it. Didn't call her? Well, who did? I don't know. It couldn't have been a talent scout. Uh, could it? <laughs> don't ask me. Hello, Ed. Uh, listen... Forget about talking to Betty. Uh, I'll explain later. We've got a problem on our hands. <laughs> the Andersons will be back in a moment. America needs more nurses. Nurses are a vital factor in our country's all-out defense preparations. And in addition, hospitals and clinics growing by leaps and bounds have an ever greater demand for trained staffs. Get full information at your local hospital. Remember Betty Anderson, pleasant, attractive little college freshman? She was the one who couldn't find her way off the stage in the college play last night who was utterly crushed, humiliated. You should see her today. It seems a talent scout from New York phoned with high praise for her performance. Well, that did it. Betty's off on a glittering cloud, while down below in the white frame house on Maple Street, the uh, ordinary people are struggling through the end of the afternoon. Like this. Hi, Mom. Hello, bud. Where's Tallulah? <laughs> If you're talking about Betty, I don't know. Is that your father coming up the walk? Yeah. Thank goodness. Margaret, I'm home. We're in the kitchen, dear. Hello, honey. Oh, I'm glad you're home. Hi, Daddy. Hiya, Dad. Hi, kitten. Bud. Well, bring me up to date, Margaret. Where's Betty? Goodness only knows. She raced out of here this morning, babbled something about having pictures taken. I wish you had talked to her, Jim. I tried, honey, before I left. She's in another world. You can't even get an intelligent conversation out of her. I'm worried, Jim. You should have seen her around here this morning, Daddy. Talk about icky. She calls everybody darling. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, it isn't funny, Jim. She's taking this seriously. You should have been here. She was patting me on the head and calling me sweetie. <laughs> Honestly, Jim, she thinks she's going to New York. Whoever this talent scout is... Now, wait, honey. I've been thinking about this today. There's only one thing to do. Let her have her dream. The whole thing is in her mind. You know as well as I do that no talent scout is going to put Betty on Broadway. It'll all blow over. She had on Mommy's wedding dress and a book on her head. <laughs> she couldn't even balance the book. <laughs> 
<laughs> You've never seen a stage-struck girl, Jim. She's absolutely convinced that she's been discovered. Oh, honey, these things pass so quickly. You just think so. I'll bet anything she's talked to some of her friends today, and she'll come home with a whole thing forgotten. Hello, Mother. <laughs> mother? You see, Daddy, you see? Oh, Princess, uh, come on out. We're in the kitchen. She won't come into the kitchen. There are no mirrors out here. <laughs> Jim, we've got to straighten her out once and for all. Now, don't get excited, Margaret. Uh, Betty? Hello, Father, dear. Mother. Oh, I'm so dreadfully tired. This has been a simply hectic day. Uh, Princess, I think we ought to sit down and have a little talk Oh, but about... I can't now. I have so many things to do. Mother, may I have my dinner in my room this evening? <laughs> dinner in your room? What's the matter? You sick or something? <laughs> Kathy, you keep out of this. Don't scold her, Father. She's only a child. <laughs> Betty, I want you to stop this nonsense. You'll have your dinner at the table with the rest of us. What in the world has come over you? What have you been doing all day? I've been sitting. <laughs> sitting. That she can do. <laughs> Where have you been sitting? Oh, Father, please don't be so utterly rural. In the theater, one sits for photographs. I've been having my picture taken. What for? For Mr. Lambert, my agent. Agent? 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 What's an agent? <laughs> oh, you're all so amusingly unfamiliar with the theater. Every actress has an agent. Princess, I realize I'm just a small-town boy, but who is Mr. Lambert? The talent scout. He's also going to be my agent. He'll handle all the contracts, deal with the press, arrange interviews. Oh, I see. Well, Princess, don't you think we'd better... Forgive me, Father. I must go to my room. Betty, what are you going to do? I'm going to rest my eyes. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Uh, what's the plan, Betty, with this Mr. Lambert, or whatever his name is? What's he going to do? Oh, I'm going to New York, naturally. Oh, naturally. <laughs> can't go to New York. She has to stay here and help me with the dishes. <laughs> Betty, who is this Mr. Lambert? Mother, he's a talent scout for all the Broadway shows, but all of them. He says I have a rare gift, that soon my name will be traced in lights across the firmament of Broadway. But, Princess... Oh, I know there'll be tears and heartaches. I'll be lonely sometimes, but that's the theater. Betty... Forgive me now. I must go to my room. I'm simply exhausted. Telephone. I'll get it. It's probably Ralph. I'll answer it. Be so stupid. I have it. Yes. <laughs> she uh, jumps in and out of the theater real fast. Oh, hello, Ralph. So nice to hear from you, really. Mommy, why don't you just lock her in her room? I'm hungry. Let's eat. <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry, Ralph. I won't be able to go to the mall shop anymore. I'm going on the stage. The theater. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm afraid it's all over between us, Ralph. It's the price of a career. Jim, we can't let her go on like this. I know we can't, but it is fascinating. <laughs> oh, let's not say goodbye, Ralph. Let's just say, auf Wiedersehen. What's that, cheese? <laughs> That's German, means I'll be seeing you. I'll be leaving for New York soon, and I'll think of you, Ralph. Your spare tire? Oh, it's in our garage. How'd that get in there? I must go up and pack now. No tears, no regrets. We must both carry on bravely, heads high, courage in our hearts. If I listen to much more of this, I won't be able to eat. <laughs> Goodbye, Ralph. Goodbye. Cheerio. Mommy, 
is she really going to New York? Don't be a knucklehead. She couldn't find a way to Omaha. <laughs> All right, bud. You and Kathy can start setting the table for dinner. What about Betty? Oh, I must go to my room. I'm emotionally exhausted. <laughs> She's what? Run along, Angel. Uh, Princess, don't you think possibly you're pushing this career of yours a little? We don't know a thing about this fellow Lambert, Betty. You can't go rushing off to New York. Oh, don't worry, Mother. I know I'm going to be a great success. I feel it. I know, Princess, but you don't become a star overnight. It's a long, hard road. Mr. Lambert has faith in me, Father, and he knows. If he says I can be a star, who am I to question? I'm being swept upward and onward to a destiny that lies beyond the far horizon. Oh, I must go to my room now. <laughs> Holy cow, she's been going to her room for the last hour. Isn't she there yet? <laughs> Never mind. She must be off her rocker. <laughs> Leave her alone, bud. She's cuckoo, that's what. <laughs> well, Jim, are we going to talk to her now or wait till she gets off the bus in New York? What can we say to her, Margaret? She's living in the most beautiful dream of her life. Let her dream. But, dear, she doesn't think it's a dream. She believes all this. Oh, she's just pretending. She's not, Jim. She's convinced that she's an actress. You don't know what it is to be stage-struck. I can't believe it, Margaret. Not Betty. She knows down in her heart that this is all make-believe. Father! Yes, Princess? I probably won't be opening in a play in New York until fall. Do you think you and Mother could come back for my opening night? Well, I don't know. Or I'll get you the very best seat. Thank you, Princess. Just pretending, is she? Oh, that's probably Mr. Lambert, Father. He said he'd call tonight. Oh? Tell him, I, tell him I'm at the hairdresser. I'll call him back. At the hairdresser? Oh, dear. Hello? Is this the Anderson residence? Yes, it is. This is Harold Lambert speaking. Is this Mr. Anderson? Yes. Well, fine. Mr. Anderson, you have a very talented daughter. Yes, I want to talk to you about Betty, Mr. Lambert. It is our purpose to seek promising young actors and actresses throughout the country to bring them to New York, where we're able to give them the training they need to step into the theater prepared for a career in the dramatic world. Oh. I know you're a man who is proud of his daughter, Mr. Anderson. I know you're the kind of a man who wants her to have the best dramatic training. I represent the most successful dramatic school in New York. Dramatic school? The cost of our course is very nominal, and if you wish, it can be paid in convenient monthly payments. Now, uh, I'd like to talk to you further about this. Mr. Lambert. Yes? We are not interested in your dramatic school, and thank you very much. Jim, it's a dramatic school? Yeah. What kind? Oh, a phony. I'll bet on it. Poor Betty. How are we going to tell her? Was that my agent, Father? Uh, yes, Princess. Do you want me to do it, dear? No, I'll tell her. <laughs> I don't know how, but I've got to do it. What's wrong? Uh, I want to talk to you, Princess. Well, of course. Uh, let's, uh, go in your room. What happened, Father? Is it all right if I sit here on the bed? Oh, sure. I've just been sorting out the things I'll need. Of course, I'll buy all new clothes when I open in my first play. Betty, uh, I think you know that there's a great deal more to being an actress than just, uh, going to New York or... Or getting a part. Oh, I know that, Father. I don't expect to be a star overnight. It might take two or three months. <laughs> well, it's more than just time. A person has to live. Uh, to be a great actress, Princess, you have to have known disappointments, uh, heartaches, real ones. You have to know what it means to cry for the loss of something very dear to you. What do you mean, Father? Uh, Princess, you know I've never lied to you in your life. I know. Well, I'm going to tell you something uh, that's going to hurt. And I want you to show me that you are a great actress by taking it. Um, your Mr. Lambert isn't a talent scout. Oh. 
he only wanted to sell you a course in a dramatic school. And not a good one, either. Are you sure? Yes, dear, I'm sure. He didn't think I was... He just said those things to... <laughs> I... I know what a disappointment this is. Uh, listen to me, Betty. Uh, sometimes you have to be a fine actress to get along in ordinary life. Uh, even right here at home. In fact, this is the best place to show how capable you are. This is the time when you can show us and prove to yourself how well you can act. Just think of this as your first play, uh, your opening night, and it's a difficult role. When you go downstairs to uh, face the family, that will be your big test. The curtain will be going up. Can you hold your chin up? Can you smile? Uh, I'll try. You're the girl who has just lost the one thing she wanted most in life. But she must hide her broken heart. Carry on bravely. Smiling. I'm smiling, Father. Ring up the curtain. The Andersons will be right back. You girls know that with a nursing degree, you can enter the armed forces with the rank of lieutenant. You can choose hospital or private duty, industrial or public health nursing, the airlines or the Veterans Administration. Visit your local hospital and learn about the opportunities open to you in the field of nursing. Well, the last light has gone out in the windows of the white frame house on Maple Street. The drama of the day has closed, and all the Andersons have settled down for sleep, thoughts of the day, dreams of tomorrow, or, as in the case of Jim and Margaret, a little of all three. Like this. <laughs> Jim. Jim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jim, what did you say to Betty? Oh, a uh, number of things. Why? I've never seen her so poised, so beautiful as she was this evening. As if nothing had happened. Well, a girl's an actress, Margaret, and a good one. I wonder where she gets it. Well, if you must know... <laughs> I'm really not a bad actor myself. <laughs> oh, go to sleep. <laughs> Join us again next week. We'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. In our cast were Ted Donaldson as Bud, Gene Vanderpile, Rhoda Williams, Norma Jean Nilsson, Bill Foreman, and Don Stanley speaking. Father Knows Best, directed by Andrew C. Love, was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Tomorrow evening, there's a favorite program for every taste on NBC. Western fans will want to hear the Roy Rogers Show, while music lovers will find enjoyable listening on the Mario Lanza Show. And to tickle your funny bone, tomorrow hear Bob and Ray, this year's winners of the Peabody Award, radio's highest honor. Yes, Friday brings entertainment for everyone, with Bob and Ray... Mario Lanza, and Roy Rogers, each providing 30 minutes of top radio programming. Tonight, Counterspy offers mystery and adventure on NBC.